Oh, oh what a jock. Oh. Well, hello there, 6A, 6B, and 6G. Um, as you can see from my background, obviously I've made it down to Florida. How did I get here? I have no idea. And why my chair is in the middle of the road? No one seems to care in this neighborhood. So um, that being said, as you can see, this is our first read aloud session. And the backdrop that you see over here is the setting of our story, of a read aloud story. So as you can see, there's palm trees. It is located in the United States, it's Florida, and that's the setting. So what book are we gonna be doing? Great question. So here's the book right here, Because of Winn-Dixie. It is a Newbery book winner. Uh, and as you can see, there's the title there and by Kate DiCamillo. So I'm gonna be, just begin to read this book that I have in front of me in the middle of the street. And um, yeah, so I'll just begin and uh, we'll just take it from there. Thanks. Because of Winn-Dixie, starting with chapter one. All right. My name is India Opal Baloney. And last summer, my daddy, the preacher, sent me to the store for a box of macaroni and cheese, some white rice and two tomatoes, and I came back with a dog. Weird. This is what happened. I walked into the produce section of the Winn-Dixie grocery store to pick out my two tomatoes, and I almost bumped right into the store manager. He was standing there in red face, screaming and waving his arms around. Who let a dog in here? He kept on shouting. Who let a dirty dog in here? At first, I didn't see a dog. There was just a bunch of vegetables rolling around the floor, tomatoes and onions and green peppers. And there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around, waving their arms, just the same way the store manager was waving his. Now, personal connection, if you've been down to the Southern States, there's a chain of store um, called Winn-Dixie. It's like, it's like your Sobeys. It's a pretty decent grocery store. And then the dog came running around the corner. He was a big dog and ugly. And he looked like he was having a real good time. His tongue was hanging out and he was wagging his tail. He skidded to a stop and smiled right at me. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile, but that is what he did. He pulled back his lips and showed me all his teeth. Then he wagged his tail so hard that he knocked some oranges off a display and they went rolling everywhere, mixing in with the tomatoes and the onions and the green peppers. The manager screamed, somebody grab that dog. The dog went running over to the manager, wagging his tail and smiling. He stood up on his hind legs. You could tell that all he wanted to do was be face to face with the manager and thank him for the good time he was having in the produce department. But somehow he ended up knocking the manager over and the manager must have been having a bad day because lying there on the floor right in front of everyone, he started to cry. Yeah. The dog leaned over him real concerned and licked his face. Please, said the manager, somebody call the pound. Now, if you don't know what the pound is, it's basically animal services. Um, to try to get rid of like not wanted animals. Wait a minute, I hollered. That's my dog, don't call the pound. All the Winn-Dixie employees turned around and looked at me and I knew I had done something big and maybe stupid too, but I couldn't help it. I couldn't let that dog go to the pound. Here boy, I said. The dog stopped looking the manager's face and put his ears up in the air and looked at me like he was trying to remember where he was from. Here boy, I said again. And then I figured that the dog was probably just like everybody else in the world, that he would want to get me called by his name, only I didn't know what his name was. So I just said the first thing that came into my head. I said, here, Winn-Dixie. And that dog came trotting over to me just like he had been doing it his whole life. The manager sat up and gave me a hard stare, like maybe I was making fun of them. It's his name, I said, honest. The manager said, don't you know not to bring a dog into a grocery store? Yes, sir, I told him. He got in by mistake. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Come on, Winn-Dixie, I said to the dog. I started walking and he followed along behind me as I went out of the produce department and down the cereal aisle and past all the cashiers and out the door. Once we were safe outside, I checked him over real careful and he didn't look that good. He was big, but skinny. You could see his ribs and there were bald patches all over him, places where he didn't have fur at all. 
Mostly he looked like a big piece of old brown carpet that had been left out in the rain. You're a mess, I told him. I bet you don't belong to anybody. He smiled at me. He did that thing again where he pulled back his lips and showed me his teeth. He smiled so big that it made him sneeze. It was like he was saying, I know I'm a mess. Isn't it funny? It's hard not to immediately fall in love with a dog who has a good sense of humor. Come on, I told him. Let's see what the preacher has to say about you. And the two of us, me and when Dixie started walking home. Now, obviously, if we were interactive in the class, we'd be asking questions about the book. As you know, one of the settings um, that we saw, um, or heard, probably is a better word, um, was the grocery store when Dixie. So that's the, the beginning setting. This is the backdrop of the story. Um, we have been introduced to some characters, some minor ones, the, the um, general manager of the store, and um, we have the main protagonist or the main character, and the name is, escapes me, India Opal Baloney. And we also have Winn-Dixie. So those are the characters. And then we started off with some events in action about a dog kind of messing around in a store. So there's your setting, characters, and uh, part of your plot. Three good things to remember in a narrative. Chapter two. Chapter two. All right. That summer, I found Winn-Dixie was also the summer me and the preacher moved to Naomi, Florida so he could be the new preacher at the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. So obviously her dad is um, a member of the clergy, so he's a minister. My daddy is a good minister and a nice man, but sometimes it's hard for me to think about him as daddy because he spends so much time um, ministering about getting ready to preach. And so in my mind, I think of him as the preacher and that's what I call him. Before that, he was a missionary, but he calls me by my second name, Opal, because that was his mom's name, and he loved her a lot. Anyway, while me and when Dixie walked home, I told him how I got my name, and I told him how I had just moved to Naomi. I also told him about the preacher and how he was a good man, even though he got a little bit too distracted with his work. But you know what? I told him when Dixie, you are a suffering dog, so maybe he will take to you right away. Maybe he'll let me keep you. When Dixie looked up at me and wagged his tail, he was kind of limping like something was wrong with one of his legs. And I have to admit, he stunk bad. He was an ugly dog, but already I loved him with all my heart. I don't know what some of you, but if you're a dog person or cat person, you know, um, as soon as you uh, see an animal that you love, you take to right away. And obviously, uh, Opal's taken to this dog when, named Win Dixie. When we got to the Friendly Corners trailer park, so as you can see in the background, this is where she lives. This is a trailer park or a, the Floridian version of a trailer park behind me. Um, so she lives at Friendly Corners trailer park. I told Win Dixie that he had to behave right and be quiet because this was an all adult trailer park and the only reason I got to live in it was because the preacher had a good quiet kid, me. I was what the Friendly Corner trail park manager, Mr. Alfred, called an exception. That's a big word, an, ex an exception it means you kind of allow something to happen when you shouldn't, or you allow um, an event or something to happen when normally something like that wouldn't happen. And I told Winn-Dixie he had to act like an exception too. Specifically, I told him not to pick any fights with Mr. Alfred's cats, or Mrs. Detweiler's little yappy Yorkie dog. I don't know if you've ever seen those Yorkies, really small yappy dogs. Samuel, when Dixie looked at me while I was telling him everything, and I swear he understood what I was saying. Sit, I told him when we got to my trailer. He sat right down. He had good manners. Stay here, I told him. I'll be right back. The preacher was sitting in the living room. It's weird that, her, that she calls her dad that kind of, I don't know, kind of impersonal in a way. Working at the little fold-out table. He had paper spread all around him. He was rubbing his nose, which means he was thinking hard. Daddy, I said. Hmm, he said back. Daddy, do you know how you always tell me that we should help those less fortunate than ourselves? Mm-hmm, he said. He rubbed his nose and looked around his papers. Well, I said, I found a less fortunate at the grocery store. Is that right, he said. Yes, sir, I told him. I stared at the preacher really hard. 
Sometimes he reminded me of a turtle hiding inside its shell in there, thinking about things and not ever sticking his head out into the world. Daddy, I was wondering, could this less fortunate, could he stay with us for a while? Finally, the preacher looked up at me. Opal, he said. What are you talking about? I found a dog, I told him, and I want to keep him. No dogs, the preacher said. We've talked about this before. You do not need a dog. I know it, I said. I know I don't need a dog, but this dog needs me. Look, I said. I went to the trailer and I hollered, Win Dixie! When Dixie's ears shot up in the air and he grinned and sneezed, and then he came limping up the stairs and into the trailer and put his head right into the preacher's lap, right on top of a pile of papers. The preacher looked at Win Dixie. He looked at his ribs and his matted up fur and the places where he was bald. The preacher's nose wrinkled up. Like I said, the dog smelled pretty bad. When Dixie looked up at the preacher, he pulled back his lips and showed the preacher all of his crooked yellow teeth and wagged his tail and knocked some of the preacher's, off, uh, uh, preacher's papers off the table. Then he sneezed and some more papers fluttered to the floor. What did you call this dog? The preacher asked. When Dixie, when Dixie I whispered. I was afraid to say anything too loud. I could see that when Dixie was having a good effect on the preacher. He was making him poke his head out of his shell. So that's an interesting line there. He was making him poke his head out of his shell. So does anyone know what that's called? It's a figurative language. It's called a metaphor. He's comparing um, her dad to a turtle. She's basically saying that the dad is acting like a turtle. He's all protective like a turtle is. And, but when Dixie is trying to get him out of his shell. So remember that metaphor, comparison of two unlike things. Well, said the preacher, he's a stray if I ever seen one. He put down his pencil and scratched when Dixie behind the ears. And a less fortunate too. That's for sure. Are you looking for a home? The preacher asked real soft to when Dixie. When Dixie wagged his tail. Well, the preacher said, I guess you found one. Chapter three, let's see how long this is. Uh... Do I do more chapter three? I think that's good enough for today. So uh, I don't know how long that was. That's the first two chapters of this book we read from, I don't know, or I read from page seven to 20. So a couple of things, a couple of things. So we kind of know from this book um, the settings. So you, can, you know the setting, Florida, trailer park, uh, house, also when Dixie the store. So those are some of the studies we've been introduced to. Some of the characters, the preacher, um, which is her dad, Opal, which is the main character, and when Dixie, and the minor character of the store manager, not really important, but minor character nonetheless. And we got the plot so far. Um, interesting to note is um, there's a literary concept called foreshadowing, and foreshadowing is a pretty big big high school term, but what it means is um, there's hints or signs to things of, to come up ahead. And we can tell some foreshadowing is happening because Opal calls her dad the preacher. And usually when you don't have, I guess, a, a lovey-dovey word, you know, daddy, mummy, it's a very objective word. So she's calling him by his occupation. So there may be some conflict between the dad and the daughter. So that, that's a concept called foreshadowing. So pretty good concept that we learned today. So that's enough for today for the read aloud session. Um, that being said, I will have a discussion question on some of the things that we have talked about today. So that's going to be in your feed and you're going to have to answer a question. What I want you to do, you're going to be opening up a Google Docs, just entitle it because of when Dixie at the top. So make sure you put the title in. And I'm gonna put a discussion question in the feed. You're gonna to have to answer the question. You don't have to submit it right away because this will be an ongoing thing, but you do have to answer the question, okay? So again, uh, as I mentioned before, being out in the middle of the street in Florida, it's really nice actually. It's kind of relaxing and uh, I don't have to really worry that much. So anyway, I'll see you guys later. I hope everyone uh, stays safe and sound. Um, if you have the book online and you want to read it, it's a great little book here because of Winn-Dixie and we're doing this for a read aloud.
And um, yeah, stay tuned for the discussion feed. On the activity feed, I should be posting it online. Um, what the discussion question on what to do and the steps to do it shouldn't be that hard. And it will be an ongoing document um, about the book. So again, thanks for coming by and listening to me read and uh, have a good time in Hamilton because I'm probably going to go out to the beach maybe. Who knows? Anyway, see you guys later. Have a good one.